So welcome again, and thank you for joining us. My name is Karen Corman, and I have the privilege of being the Executive Director of the UIC Alumni Association. Welcome to the UIC Alumni Exchange Series. Each week, we work to bring you a variety of programs and topics so you can explore, connect, and even escape with the everyday of a community of UIC alumni, faculty, and staff experts. You'll hear me say this a few times today, but I encourage you to visit go.uic.edu backslash alumni exchange for the latest and greatest programming. And with that, I'm excited to start our program this afternoon featuring UIC alumna, Hallie Crawford, who is a certified career coach and national career expert. Whether you are remote job searching or wanting to expand your network, we will appreciate that she has joined us to discuss leveraging LinkedIn for professional success. Thank you so much, Hallie, for being with us here today, and I'll turn it over for you to begin the program. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here today with everyone. Thank you for your participation um, and time today. So as Karen said, I am um, a certified career coach, um, speaker, and author, and the founder of my own company, uh, Create Your Career Path. And I actually um, am a UIC alum, as Karen said, and I've been co coaching and training for just over 20 years now and absolutely love what I do. So I am thrilled to be here with you all today and again, greatly appreciate your time. Wanted to let you all know that because we're, all, we're in this uncertain, uncertain kind of crazy time that we are trying to put out as much information and posting articles and content to help people with whatever situation they're in, whether it's job search, furloughed, laid off, new grad trying to figure out what do I do next and how do I handle this kind of crazy job market. So please feel free to visit our website as well and check out our career blog, connect with me on LinkedIn, because we are trying to help people as much as we possibly can during what we know are very uncertain and unsettling times for all of us. So let's dive into our content for today. What we're going to be talking about is LinkedIn and how to leverage it more effectively for varying reasons, um, professional success and branding yourself more effectively. It could be because you're looking for an internship or you need to you know, find a new job, whether it's now or later on um, this year because you're unsatisfied or unfulfilled. So here's the deal. Um, if you take a look at this first slide, um, LinkedIn, as we all know, is a critical tool and a very important resource for your professional success and development, just for so many different reasons. Just by the way, we truly believe that these days after LinkedIn has been around for so long, that it is not optional for your search or just for putting yourself out there as a professional who really means business, so to speak. And the deal is that um, LinkedIn is that much more important or even more important due to COVID-19 because we all feel so much more isolated from each other. We've had clients tell us that they don't like their jobs as much anymore or at all because one of the things they're realizing they really liked was being connected with their coworkers or their employees and having that office environment. Job seekers during COVID-19 can feel really uncertain about how to handle their search. And we've had tons of people tell us, should I continue my search? Should I even you know, bother looking? Should I like stop or slow down? Um, and it can feel even more difficult to maintain connections with people um, professionally. And finally, what we have found, and this is understandable for so many of us, that that sense of collaboration we have when we're working with our coworkers and morale and, you know, the corporate culture and that sense of belonging that we all have, you know, we all want to feel a part of something bigger than us and being a part of an organization. A lot of that is having that collaboration and all of these things are taking a hit during COVID-19. So we're going to talk about these items, but everything else outside of it well past COVID-19 as well. And these are the things we want you to think about in order to effectively leverage LinkedIn, again, whether it's for your job search or for other purposes. So the three things we're going to discuss today are on this next slide here. We're going to talk about your profile and how to update it so it's as effective as it possibly can be for you and so that you feel more confident about it overall because that's critically important too. We're going to talk as well about maintaining and creating new connections. 
And then finally, we'll discuss sharing valuable information on LinkedIn and why that's important, not just to your job search, but also for you to develop your brand as a professional and kind of get your name out there, so to speak. And we wanted you to know, just by the way, if any of you would like a copy of the PowerPoint slides here, please feel free to email us at the email address that is at the bottom of all of our slides. We'd be happy to share those with you. It's admin at halliecrawford.com, just in case you don't want to feel like you're frantically writing everything down. But as a reminder, too, we are recording the presentation today as well. So here's our three steps. Um, First of all, we want to talk about your profile and some of the basics, but we'll get into more nitty gritty with that too, your picture, your brand, and how to articulate that effectively on your profile. We'll talk about how to make new connections, but also some of the good ways to send and accept requests from people and how to ask your network for assistance with your job search over time. And then finally, we'll talk about sharing information. And some of the things here could be writing articles, participating in LinkedIn groups, or sharing posts with other people, and how that can help you stay in front of other people because those things will appear on their feed. And we'd like to go ahead and do our first poll for today, if we could. We are curious how many of you have a 100% complete LinkedIn profile, which we mean is basically every section filled out, you feel really good about it. And as most of you probably know, but if you don't, at the top of LinkedIn, it is now starting to tell you if your profile is 100% complete. They're adding all of these bells and whistles to LinkedIn over time, which is cool, but it also makes it a little bit hard sometimes to stay on top of things. So we get that and understand it. But we want to make sure that at a bare minimum, everyone you know, goes back to their LinkedIn profile after this and gets it to 100%. Okay, so thanks for sharing the results, Karen. And we've got um, 85% are saying no, they don't. So it's a good thing that you're here. You're in the right place. That's awesome. And um, for those people that do have your profile filled out, take the steps and the nuggets for how to enhance it even more um, over time as well. Because as I said just a minute ago, one of the things that you do want to just be mindful of is you need to stay on top of the changes that LinkedIn is introducing on a pretty regular basis. And the way that you can do that is simply by logging in and, you know, checking out your profile and checking out your settings like once a month just to make sure everything is in the right place. So LinkedIn is something that just like your resume, you, by the way, want to consider it kind of a living, breathing document that you want to keep up to date at all times. So consider both of them to be, you know, to kind of fall in that bucket, if you will. All right. And just as a quick reminder, too, before we get into the steps, just one kind of housekeeping item, we will have time at the end for questions, and I'm going to try to leave um, plenty of time to answer as much as we can. If any of you end up having questions later on that you think of, even a couple weeks later, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We'd be happy to respond to those via email. Again, that same email address at the bottom of the slides, admin at halliecrawford.com. So we're not going to go into this first step about your photo for too, too long. We're going to talk about some more specific things because most of you, I'm hoping, have a profile photo. These are some reasons here, if you do not have one because you're concerned about privacy or something else, we really encourage you to have a photo because people are more likely to message you if you have one. You're going to get more views right away. And you're also going to be contacted by not just connections, but also by employers or recruited or recruiters, I should say. Um, you're going to be more likely to be contacted and um, by them because people connect with people. They connect with like someone that they can see on a screen versus just a piece of paper. It makes a huge difference if you have a headshot, and you also want to make sure that it's very professional looking, okay? A couple of things about your headshot, and we'll talk about those more in just a moment too. But one of the things we wanted to mention just really quickly here about a possible video, because while we're, we're working remotely and it's hard to establish those you know, solid connections in person or we can't do so, we would strongly consider Um, adding a very short, quick introductory video to your LinkedIn profile as well. You can link to it from the About section in your profile. It can be a Dropbox link or a link to Google Drive or whatever is best for you. 
But if you're in sales or job search mode, and honestly, I would say even outside of that, even if you're not in that mode, if you just want to have people be able to connect with you in a better way and have a, a warmer connection there, consider adding a video introduction of yourself in the about section. It could include your elevator speech. What value do you bring to a prospective employer or to your target audience? It could include a very brief career history. Basically, in a video, you could answer the question, tell me a little bit about yourself that you would say in response to that interview question. Or if you're in sales, for example, it could be a little bit more background about your company. It needs to be short and sweet. I would say like 30 seconds, 60 seconds at the most. You want to keep it really brief. But this is something that is great that can help you stand out from the crowd and, again, establish a warmer connection with people. So consider a video. Make sure when you're working on your video or if you feel like I need a new headshot, make sure that it's very clean and professional looking. It's close up enough so that it's not like you're far away wandering around. Make sure that you use a clean, light-colored background so it's not kind of busy behind you. And make sure that it's straight on, not sideways or something like that, and that it's, you're smiling and warm. We've had some clients come to us with their LinkedIn profile, and they look too serious, and it's a little bit too – it's just not as connecting as it could be. So make sure you're smiling and it's a warm picture. The other thing that we want to consider, and then we'll show you this on the next slide, an example of this actually – is you may have noticed with a lot of people these days, you need to include and can include an image behind your headshot for your banner instead of that standard kind of blue dots image that LinkedIn has, okay? These are some examples here on this slide of things that you could include there depending on what you're using LinkedIn for right now. It could be the logo of your company. It could be a nature scene. Again, it, we don't want it to be something that's too busy, so you want it to be a little bit light colored and not kind of distracting from your headshot. It could be the skyline of Chicago because of UIC or skyline of where you live. Or it could be something else relevant to your industry. I'll show you what I mean here on this next slide. So this is an example of a LinkedIn profile that was created by our LinkedIn expert for one of our clients. So you'll see here, clean, nice looking headshot, okay? What I'm talking about related to or regarding the banner is you can have a banner behind your head. And the cool thing about this banner is that our LinkedIn expert created this branded banner for her, explaining who she is, not just her job title, because this is not her job title, she's the regional director, but having kind of a branded banner about um, who she is as a professional, but then also like a tagline, if you will, which could be part of her elevator speech. So even if you don't get this complicated, everybody, with it, at the very least, we would like you to have a picture that helps you stand out from the crowd. Again, that's relevant to your industry, to your area, et cetera, et cetera, okay? The branded banner will help you stand out from the crowd, and it's a really big deal. It's also a talking point. It's something that someone could bring up in an interview or you could bring up in an interview, okay? So we want to encourage you to work on that behind your headshot as well, not just the picture. Let's talk a little bit more about your profile and now about the about section and branding yourself effectively, okay? One of the things that we tend to find with um, people when they first come to us is they tend to forget to put all of their contact information, just by the way, um, in their contact information section. And if, I'm going to go back here just really quickly to this first slide here. So click on contact information here, everyone, when you go into your LinkedIn profile, and make sure that you have your phone number, your email address, your Twitter handle. If you have a portfolio of your work, because for example, you're a graphic designer or a marketing professional, put a link to that there as well. People just tend to forget this, so I always want to remind them of it. One thing that we also want you to do with your LinkedIn profile as well in starting to get it out there a little bit more is add a link to your profile in the signature line of your email address so that people can click on it right away. It's easy for them to access. And then finally, if we go back to your profile for just a moment, under your headshot where you can have your job title, you either want to have your current job title if you're not in job search mode and this is more for branding purposes for you, or if you are in job search mode but you're looking for something different, still have your job title there, 
But regardless, it's a really good idea to use all of the um, characters in that section under your headshot because it's space for you to use. And we want you to have some keywords that can brand you effectively about what some of your strengths are. So it could be communications, marketing, and strategy. So after your job title, you could have a dash, for example, and say communications, marketing, and strategy because these are some of your skills or strengths or areas of expertise, okay? And then in your about section, everyone, what we are finding, and we actually recommend this to clients and like it, is that we have people use first person in their about section. So instead of it being more formal like your resume is, use first person so that you're talking to the reader a little bit more and therefore connecting with them. We want you to also have in that about section a branding statement that talks about the value that you provide to your audience, your clients, your customers, or to a prospective um, employer, okay? So in the about section, you want to talk about the results that you can achieve for people, what your strengths are, what your skills are, and what your expertise is, okay? So make sure the about section is really compelling because that's the next thing that people are going to see after they see your image and your header, okay? When you're finalizing your profile, okay, and you're working through this, if you're in job search mode, we especially want you to pay attention to keywords and making sure that your about section and your header at the top has the relevant keywords that a prospective employer or a recruiter might be looking for or searching on to find your brand of talent. Okay, so I gave you some examples of keywords on the previous slide. What you want to do is make sure basically that your LinkedIn profile is SEO optimized, which means search engine optimized. So just like websites like ours, we want to make sure that we have keywords on our website that would be relevant for, you know, if someone was looking for someone like us, what keywords would they be searching for on Google, for example? And that would be career coach. It could be job search. It could be job change or career transition. So think about what some of those keywords might be and make sure that you have those listed in your about section especially because that's how prospective employers could find you. If you're not sure what some of your keywords might be, another good way to think about this is to look at the job descriptions of jobs that you are interested in applying for or have applied for, and that can give you some ideas for possible keywords too. Another thing we want you to really work on is getting recommendations from other people to list at the bottom of your profile because we like people to use those recommendations. It's good to have them there on their profile, but you also can use them on your resume, little excerpts of them, and also in your cover letter, but also in some of those follow-up emails from people too. So recommendations are great not just to have listed on there, but also to leverage them in some of your marketing materials. And then finally, before we get to our second poll here, you want to make sure you go through all of your settings in LinkedIn, okay? And make sure that everything that you want to be visible is visible and everything that you want to be private is private. LinkedIn, again, like I said earlier, they continually update their features. And you can go in and pretty extensively um, select and choose what is public and what is not. There is a button in there um, at the, if you go into um, your settings again, there's a button in there that says, I want to be viewed um, by employers and recruiters. So you want to make sure that that setting is selected. And also there is this new kind of green swoosh thing that um, I know that sounds, that's the technical term for it, but there's a new um, feature that LinkedIn has come out with that if you are in active job search mode and you really want everyone on LinkedIn to know you're searching, um, you can say that, that you want that um, option to be public, and they will put on there for you like this little green kind of banner under your headshot that says open to new opportunities. So that's an option there too. So let's do our second poll here, which is perfect if we can get to that. We are curious how many people on the call today they actually already have a background image behind their headshot like we were talking about just a few moments ago. I'm sure some people do and have figured out that that's a possibility, which is great if you have. And we'll give you a minute to participate in this. That's perfect. So as you guys are doing this, oh, and Karen, go ahead, please. All right, I was just gonna say, while this is going on, we had um, two questions that came in in, uh, in mm -hmm. the about section. So I thought it might be helpful to just um, give those to you. Um, one is, 
Could the text in the about section be the same as the text on this person's website page? Yes, I would say that it's okay to do that. I might change it up just a little bit so that when they go to your website, they're not like, oh, this is the exact same thing. You can use what's on your website as the basis for it, but you may want to just change the language or switch it up just a smidge. But, you know, as, a, as the basis of it, that's totally fine. Great question. Great. And then real quick, second question is the person's asking how they add a video to the about page. So you would need to um, put a link to um, your video. So a Dropbox link, you can sign up for Dropbox just for free or like from Google Drive. So you'd need to create your video and upload it to one of those features or your website and then put a link in there that they can click on it to then view it. Oh, and I should say too, you could create it on YouTube and upload it there and just put the YouTube link. That's probably the easiest. Great question. So YouTube is fantastic for this. 76% um, do not have a branded image, so let's work on that as one of your first things that you want to do, even everyone, if it's just putting an image up there. It's okay to start with something basic and then work through this. Don't feel like everything has to be perfect all at once. It is okay to take it in baby steps. And just by the way, we do have um, a LinkedIn expert on our team who can help do all of this for you if that feels better for you and more comfortable and you prefer that. Happy to talk with you about that. Just email us at admin at halliecrawford.com. We try to keep that affordable for people as well. All right, so step number two, let's talk about making connections, okay? So this is actually still a good time to start expanding or continue to expand your network, everybody. What we're telling people is pretend that it's more like holiday time during this time of coronavirus. And what we mean by that is do not stop searching, just like we wouldn't start, stop searching during the holidays. Just give people a little bit more lead time to get back with you and be more mindful that people have busier schedules and a lot on their plate, okay? In terms of networking, we'll go through these quickly because some of these are basics. We obviously want you to start with really warm leads, coworkers in past and previous jobs, friends and family, starting to reach out to people a little bit more because, by the way, at the bottom of this slide here, we do want you to be working towards more than 500 connections because that's kind of a magic number to make you look like you're well-connected, you care about your professional development, et cetera. Recruiters and employers tell us this, that 500 plus connections is where you wanna be in terms of connections. So start reaching out to people more and more, even if it's people that you don't know. We would highly encourage you to start connecting with University UIC alumni and Karen and everybody else on the team, they didn't pay me to say this, we tell people this all the time. People sometimes forget that they really need to leverage their LinkedIn group for um, their alma mater, as well as any other LinkedIn um, or um, alumni resources that UIC has. Okay, so we want you to start connecting with alumni as well. You could begin connecting with influencers in your industry or professionals that you meet in LinkedIn groups. So go ahead and continue to expand your network or make those new connections. Don't stop. Just realize that people may be a little bit busier and it may take a little bit more time. With LinkedIn groups, we do want you to start leveraging those because now that we are unable to um, network with people in person, LinkedIn groups are becoming more important and critical. We are also suggesting to our clients, by the way, meetup groups as well. Meetup groups is just meetup.com, and those are becoming more popular for professional purposes as well as social purposes too, but those groups are going online as well. So we want you to start to join some more LinkedIn groups and check out meetup groups as well. Checking out and looking for, searching for industry-specific groups, that's really important, we also want you to look for groups that are a little bit larger and or more active. I would say more active is more important than larger groups necessarily. But one of the things that you can do is to note those people who are more active or most active in these groups and start to connect with them. Respond to their posts inside of the group, but then try to make that connection with them offline. They could become a really solid networking connection for you. We've had clients do this all the time, okay? And if you're still currently working um, or hopefully working um, versus having been furloughed or laid off, one of the things we, that we want to suggest that um, to just stay in touch with your coworkers a little bit more and connect with them, not just for connection purposes, but if you need to conduct a job search later on, 
do these video coffee chats, like just make more of an effort to have LinkedIn networking and networking outside of LinkedIn <clears throat> a little bit more of your like daily routine and schedule because I think what uh, is happening to a lot of us understandably is we're going into a little bit of a hole here with this remote work and we start to not um, participate as actively in some of our work meetings, et cetera, et cetera. So even outside of LinkedIn, we highly recommend video coffee chats with your coworkers so that you can keep that connection going and get re-engaged in your work and what's going on and get a little bit more motivated. But if you're in job search mode and you're networking with people, conducting informational interviews, for example, we would recommend not just doing a phone call. If that's what they prefer and, you know, that's what they um, is important to them, that's totally fine and their preference, that's okay. But if you're trying to establish new, warm, and positive connections with people, we would recommend a video coffee chat with them, not just a phone call. Conduct informational interviews with these new connections to ask them questions about what they recommend um, you do to put your best foot forward in your search. Is their particular organization looking for some specific skill set that you need to know about, that you need to you know, put on your LinkedIn profile, for example? So conduct these informational interviews and any meetings that you're setting up with people over video chat so, again, you can establish a stronger connection with people. And in terms of making connections, um, LinkedIn etiquette kind of in general, keep in mind that if you are wanting to contact for an informational interview, a second or third connection, the best thing to do is first go through that first connection, the person that you have in common, to make the introduction. Because obviously they're going to be more likely to get back with you if you go that route. And as a reminder, too, always include a note inside that invitation. Don't just include the standard you know, note that LinkedIn creates for you. Let them know why you want to connect with them because, number one, they're more likely to actually accept your connection request. But also, especially if you're wanting to chat with them for a few minutes, you want to include that as part of your connection request. Make it a little bit more meaningful so that, again, you're establishing a more solid connection. And by the way, too, if you don't have the LinkedIn app on your phone, we would highly recommend getting that. Number one, because we want you to include networking on LinkedIn and staying on top of what's going on on LinkedIn and responding to your messages through LinkedIn in a timely fashion. We also want you to know, you know what's new on LinkedIn, too, so that you get used to that and incorporate checking your LinkedIn profile almost as much, not quite as much, I would say, but almost as much as you would check your emails because this is a critical piece to networking and maintaining your professional brand. We talked just a second ago about not sending the default LinkedIn message. The reason why we want you to include that is you also want to remind them of how you met. So, for example, if you have noticed their post on a LinkedIn group and you would like to reference that so that they know how you found them, reference that or mention that in the message. Some other examples of what you could put into this LinkedIn connection request could be, I recently read your article on XYZ or in this group. You know, I appreciate your point of view. I'd love to be able to connect and talk with you further about this. Or I enjoyed meeting you at this first virtual event or connecting with you this way. I'd like to you know, keep in touch on LinkedIn. It doesn't have to be that long or extensive, but put some thought into it and have it be more meaningful and specific to them versus, again, just the generic LinkedIn message. Okay? If any of you feel like you need more assistance with how to wordsmith, anything that we've talked about today, how to write or rewrite your about section, get some quick advice on that, but are also interested in our coaching services, I did just want to briefly mention we'd be happy to talk with you further about any of that. Just email us at admin at halliecrawford.com, and we'll set you up with one of our coaches for a free quick strategy session to get additional advice and we can tell you a little bit more about our coaching services and how we can help you, whether it's through LinkedIn or any other career goals. All right, let's talk a little bit more about making connections and also keeping up with your existing network. So we talked a few minutes ago about establishing new connections, and we do want you to focus on that during this time, but we also want you to keep up with your existing ne network. And remember how anything that you post will be listed on your feed if you have selected that in your settings. So LinkedIn is a way to stay in front of people on a regular basis, kind of like Facebook has a feed, LinkedIn has a feed as well. 
So one of the things that you may want to turn on but start to use is LinkedIn notifications for any professional achievements. Use those to let people know if you've completed a class or a certification or won an award, any kind of professional achievement or milestone. Post it up there so people can stay in touch with what's going on for you. Check and respond to your messages at least weekly at a bare minimum. Create these new connections like we said. Join LinkedIn groups. And by the way, I would recommend joining like two LinkedIn groups. I don't. The goal is not to join 10 of them and then you're overwhelmed and you don't participate in any of them. A couple of LinkedIn groups to start is plenty. And make sure that when you're asking other people for recommendations, you show that you give back and write recommendations for other people as well. And as I said earlier, make sure that networking is not just part of your weekly schedule, but part of your daily schedule in some way, shape, or form, especially if you're in job search mode. Okay. So how to ask for help from your connections. If you feel like you need some advice about you know, asking for a promotion or getting to the next level in your career or it's for job search assistance, the things that you need to be thinking about in terms of balancing asking for help but not asking for too much is the basic formula on this slide here. Ask for things that are reasonable. Don't ask someone to rewrite your resume or review your resume. That's just too big of an ask. You can ask them to take a look at your summary statement or talk with you about it on the phone for a few minutes to ask specific questions. So just make sure you're not asking for something that's going to take too much of their time. Make it convenient for them. So if you're looking to schedule a quick informational interview for them, give them times in that initial email or LinkedIn message. These are the times I'm available in the next few weeks. What is best for you? And make it convenient. If they prefer just phone versus video chat, go with that. Make sure at all times you're available to help them and ask them each time, how can I help you? What can I do to assist you? And when you're reaching out to people for job search specific advice, make sure that you're asking them just for their time and advice about your job search in general. Let them know you're not asking them for a job or get, you know, to have them get you a job, okay? Be very clear that you're asking for information and wanting to conduct an informational interview, for example. All right, let's get to step number three, our third and last um, step for today, and then we'll get to Q&A here in just a few moments. In terms of sharing information for, with your network, the reason why the, we feel this is actually really important is, is because it helps to establish you and your brand. It establishes you as a professional that has an opinion, a perspective on what's going on, and it also helps stay in front of other people if you're in job search mode. So we encourage you to write articles, even if they're really short and sweet. They don't have to be that long. These can be things where you're sharing your insights about what is going on in your industry. It could be creative ideas that you have, what motivates you during this time to you know, perform a specific task or work on a certain project. It could be problem-solving advice. It doesn't have to be every single day. You don't want to blow up the feed too much. It could be once a week. And just by the way, if you don't feel ready to start writing articles, you can start sharing articles that you have found that are helpful. But put a little nugget or thought about you know, why you shared the article and what your opinion is. The articles should be concise and worth reading. Again, they help you stand out and helps you build credibility and maintain connection with other people while we're all working from home. Okay. A second thing to do to share information with your network is to participate in LinkedIn groups like we talked about earlier. Another place to share information is within your LinkedIn groups. You could write brief articles or share articles that you've posted with groups. Um, you could, as part of participating in groups, you can ask questions specific to that industry, again, about how to put your best foot forward in your search. So if you're looking for an internship, or you're looking for job opportunities, or you're looking for other places to network in addition to LinkedIn, like industry-specific associations, you can ask in these LinkedIn groups for advice from those people specific to that particular industry. Okay? So in terms of participating in groups, let's take a look at this next slide here. You want to be selective about the groups that you join and participate in. You want to make sure that they're um, going to be valuable to you in order to spend time on them. So again, we want you to look for those really active groups. 
When you're participating, we want you to ask thoughtful questions and or provide valuable information. Because remember, when you're participating, you're like, it's your brand, again, you don't want to ask questions that could be answered really easily just by Google, Googling something, Googling something about the company or whatever else it is. And we want you to provide insightful, valuable information as much as you can. Commit to participating in these groups to kind of test them out as well. You may want to try it out for a couple of weeks and say, let me see after a couple of weeks, how effective is this group for me? And reach out to people. Don't hesitate to reach out to people who are really active in those groups because those are people that are probably more likely to be open to connecting. Or you can reach out to people who you've communicated with. There's been you know, rapport and a little bit of conversation back and forth. Reach out to them offline to connect with them separately on LinkedIn, especially if you'd like to, for example, conduct an informational interview with them and chat with them for a few minutes outside of the group. That's fair game. We absolutely want you to be as assertive as possible in your job search and in your networking efforts. Remember, kind of our running joke is, and then we'll do our third poll here. If you want to go ahead and bring that up, Karen, that'd be great. Our third and last poll is how many people actively participate in their LinkedIn groups. What we say to our clients is that you can be a pest as long as you're polite and professional about it and you're not being like a stalker, right? We want you to follow up with people. We want you to reach out to them and ask them if they'd be willing to connect with you. They can always ignore you or say no. You don't have to take care of them, but be per persistent as long as you're being polite and professional about it. So our third poll here is how many actively participate in your LinkedIn groups. 87% have said no. Please know that you're not alone. Usually when we've talked with our clients about that these days, their typical answer is LinkedIn groups. Oh, right. I think I belong to some of those, but I'm not really sure, and I can't exactly remember which ones. So you're not alone if that's the case. Just start getting the ball rolling with this. Step one in the next week could be to identify which ones you're in and which ones you'd like to stay in or any new ones that you'd like to join, okay? So as we get closer to our Q&A time here, because I did want to leave plenty of time for Q&A because I know I've shared a lot of information with you all, um, and I think I've seen the chat box blinking a lot. I haven't been watching it to not get distracted, but I think we've got some questions out there. I did want you all to please take out your pen and paper here for just a moment or write it on your computer, whatever is best for you. And I want you to think about one thing that you will do in the next week related to LinkedIn. And I just wanted to remind you again that this can be baby steps. If you at least have a profile out there and you've got a headshot, that is a great start. That is good. You're ahead of the game. It's not like everything has to be perfect by next week, okay? Take it in bite-sized chunks so that you don't get too overwhelmed because it is kind of like your resume where you need to look at it one day and then sleep on it and come back to it the next day with a fresh pair of eyes to keep working on it. As I said earlier, it is kind of a living and breathing document, so to speak. So we don't expect perfection right out of the box. Just keep working on it over time. But go ahead and write one thing down that speaks to you the most, that you think is the most important thing for you. And it could be, here's some examples on the slide here. It could be getting recommendations. It could be working on your background banner. Sign up for our free strategy session if you need additional advice on any of this. Whatever works best for you, that is fine. And you might want to say to yourself, okay, over the next month before holiday time starts to kick in, I'm going to work on getting my LinkedIn profile in better shape. Set a goal for yourself that's realistic and reasonable, though, so you can start making those, um, taking those baby steps. And as we move to our Q&A portion here, I did just want to let everybody know um, to connect with me or a reminder to connect with us on LinkedIn because we are sharing information on LinkedIn that way, too. Okay, I'm going to be quiet so we can get to questions. No, Hallie, this is great. Thank you so much. It was such wonderful and useful information. Um, we had a, several questions that came in. Uh, yes. First is, can you share what is relevant and non-relevant information that can be added into a LinkedIn profile? For example, can information that is too old be eliminated? Yes, great question. So information that is too old, please go ahead and eliminate it. Um, like 10 years and older, just take it off. They probably won't, you know, read it or be as interested anyway. 
the only reason why you might want to keep older information or experience on there is if it would be relevant to your current job search. Because, for example, if you're changing directions and you're kind of shifting to something you've done before, then you may want to leave it. But otherwise, yes, take it off. And if there is information on there in your About section or anywhere else that is not relevant to your current job search and where you're going, remove it as well. Don't diffuse the message. So Great would you question. recommend you, you keep your experience on there, though, and then maybe not have description, but just have job titles and sort of keep that resume piece of it? Mm -hmm. Yes. So you don't want to have the flip side of that is you don't want to have gaps in your experience. So do leave past experience on there. And what you can do, though, is you can leave your job title and maybe just have one or two bullets that could be considered somewhat relevant to where you're going. Just have it be a lot shorter and not really long. Great. Thank you. Um, sure. Could you talk a little about the paid uh, LinkedIn options and who they would have the most value for? Yes, great. So I believe this is still the case. I encourage everyone to try the free month, give or take, of premium of LinkedIn because here's the deal with it. The premium is very helpful if you're going to use it because it gives you, um, you can search for people, like a lot more searches, um, and, and also send LinkedIn messages and message people. But you already get with the free version a certain number. So if you're not in job search mode, honestly, I don't think the premium is necessary because I'm not sure how often you're gonna be needing to LinkedIn message people. But if you are in job search mode, I would definitely sign up um, for at least a month of it and just use it because you're gonna wanna be reaching out to people and seeing which employer has viewed your profile, for example. It's really important for job search mode, in my opinion. Is that a one-time offer or where they say you can get it free for one month and then that's it for your profile? Or yeah, do you, I, they... no, that's a great question. I don't know. You may want to try, have to try it and test it out. Um, I think it is a one-time offer though. That is what, um, that's what my assumption is. So it most likely is, curious. yeah. Um, could you share any techniques on how to maintain a new connection with people that, that folks are connected with, excluding phone calls and video conferences? Mm -hmm. Sure. So maintaining connections, you could send them an article um, that you think might be helpful to them. You could just check in with them on, you know, how are things going? Do you have any holiday plans? You know, just sort of a general check in on how things are going. Or you could send them an inspirational quote or something like that, too. So anything that kind of makes you think of them or you think might be helpful or useful to them, you can um, send them an email or a LinkedIn message to um Stay in touch and kind of top of mind. Perfect. Uh, okay, so next question. Thank you for that. Uh, is it possible to still connect with people on LinkedIn if a person's profile is not public? Um, yes, I believe you can. What will happen is well, there's, I think there's different ways of doing it. So if you delete your, if the other person deletes their profile completely, obviously you're not going to be able to connect with them. But if the person is still on LinkedIn, but their profile is not public, you should be able to still connect with them. You just won't be able to see details about their profile. It just may have their name and maybe not their headshot. It's going to depend a little bit more on what their settings are and how they set it up. So you might see different options, again, depending on how they set it up. Hmm, interesting. A little bit of a different question. Do you have any suggestions on what important information students can put on LinkedIn profile pages um, if a student particularly is undeclared with his or her major? Sure. I would still put something in your about section about what you think your strengths are, your soft skills, any past experience that you have had work-wise, but also just what your strengths are. Um, so even if you haven't had, you know, typical or tradition, traditional work experience, if you've held volunteer positions, put those on there. If you served on a board or anything else, I would still populate that about section with something about you that sells you at least to a certain extent, including projects that you've worked on in school um, that you did really well with. So there still are things if you're a student that um, you can put in there. Just talk about past experience, just as if it were job experience. Mm, great. Uh, a little bit similar to the previous question on privacy, but this person says, um, I know that a good LinkedIn profile is important, but they're concerned about privacy. Is it possible to keep 
some information private, like my experience and my resume, so it's only available to prospective employers? Um, there should be. What you need to do is go through your settings with a fine tooth comb after we're done today. And there are ways to say, I want these certain pieces or sections to be viewed versus not and by whom. So yes, the short answer is you can do that. You may not be able to control it as much as you would like because it's, you know, what LinkedIn deems, you know, what's best for them, so to speak. But yes, there are ways to control the, your privacy, privacy settings. You want to make sure you go through those very carefully because there's actually a lot more of those now that they've made some upgrades and updates. Great. Thank you. Uh, the next question is, can you share an example of what is a strength compared to a skill? Um, I consider it very similar and pretty much the same thing, honestly. So if you have a strength in interpersonal communications or presentation skills, to me, it's, you know, pretty much the same thing. Um, if I were to say a soft skill would be a little bit different than like a strength, but I would still kind of argue that they're similar, would be like a leadership strength or change management or conflict resolution. But again, I, I think they're interchangeable. Great, thank you for that clarification. Um, the next question is about etiquette. Uh, do you have to respond to everyone that wants to connect with you or sends a message to you? What is the proper etiquette? No, you do not. Um, you absolutely don't have to connect with people that you're not comfortable doing so for any reason, and you don't have to respond to all of the messages. One of the things that I'm finding that you all might be finding too is because there is this new LinkedIn feature that's called Sales Navigator, it's to be able to sell to LinkedIn users. You may be getting a lot more of what we would call like kind of cold invitations or whatever, like spam. And I'm getting those as well. I just ignore them and it's okay to do so. I don't think that there's necessarily a way to block them. They may get to that point too. But just as of the past two years, there's this new feature that people, businesses specifically can buy and use to sell products and services to people. So that may be what you're seeing a little bit more of in your messages. So would you recommend if you get one of those, which I think happens often where you don't necessarily know the person, um, would you rec recommend even writing back and saying, I don't recall how we've been connected or can you refresh my memory or, or responding at all? Because I don't know how you would necessarily delineate between somebody purchasing something and, and using that from a marketing perspective versus somebody that you might have met or might have actually have a connection to. Yeah, it might have forgotten. Totally. Right. 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 Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, that's how I would feel too. Absolutely. It's totally acceptable to do that. So I would, I would write back to them if they look, you know, reputable and okay to connect with and reach out to. Yeah, absolutely. That's a perfect way to put it so that um, you can get clarification on it. Great. Thank you. Uh, another question is um, how would you recommend using LinkedIn to find internships? So what I would do is in the search bar, internships in your location or where you're looking. So look under the job section and just use the keyword internships in Chicago, for example, or uh, public relations internships in Chicago. So kind of use it like you would a job board and put that, um, put that there. Use LinkedIn, the jobs section, because you know how you can drop down at the very top in the search bar and you can search for people, companies, or jobs do it inside of um, the job section. So along those same lines, the next question is, it's a comment and then a question. Job history and amount of time worked in a single company is important. What is the best way to stand out if I've only worked internships or contract roles that were temporary? Um, you could create a header that is like your job and like the location where you were. Um, and you could say, um, I don't really, contract work or marketing, whatever the, the type of work was. You could say marketing communications, let's just say. And then underneath that, you could have kind of subheads that explain underneath that one kind of job, so to speak. You could have the different locations where you worked so that it looks a little bit more um, fluid and consistent, so to speak. Great. That's the best way I can think of off the cuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, so again, a, a comment and then a question. 
The person says they're retired by way of a layoff, but wish to re-enter the job market, but I'm not sure about which direction. How would you recommend they get started on LinkedIn? Um, I would just go ahead and make it a little bit more generic and talk about your past experience and what you would say, for example, your top you know, five strengths are. And you don't have to say, I'm looking for this, this, and this. Focus more on selling yourself, which is what you should do anyway. So come up with a branding statement about how, you know, what the strengths and skills are that you have to put in your about section. List your past experience just as it stands. And then as you work towards figuring out the next step you want to take in your direction, you can start to tailor the bullet points in your experience and your about section more in that direction. Somebody had told me a long time ago that it, you should look at LinkedIn profiles that you think are good examples and, and take mm -hmm. five of them and say, why do you think these are good examples? I don't know if you would recommend that too or not. Um, Absolutely. Just I definitely would. Them. Yeah. And you might find examples of people who are in the roles that you want to be in. I mean, that's even better. Narrow it down to those or in an industry that you're interested in and look at those and say, okay, you know, what are my preferences here? Why do I like them? That's absolutely a great thing to do. So you also just uh, touched upon this, but just want to expand on this question. Um, the person asks, is my headline my current job or what descriptors of my professional skills? Um, it should be your current job, and then you can have your uh, the descriptors of your skills after it, so both. Great. And I think probably the last question is, uh, should the language on my LinkedIn profile be identical to my resume? No, it should be similar because it's you, but in the about section, you want it to have, be first person. So you're speaking a little bit more to the person. So you want to vary it a little bit, but also speak in third person, uh, sorry, first person on LinkedIn versus third person like you would on your resume. My resume. I lied. Can I ask one more question? I just saw it come in. Mm -hmm. uh, so last question, I promise this time. Um, no. Do you recommend including job history where a job was short lived or uneventful? Um, yes, if it's going to fill a gap. It's better to have something versus a gap. If it was two weeks, then I would just skip it. Um, and if it was only like a month or, you know, a couple months or something, even if it was a couple months, I would still err on the side of not having a gap. Just have it listed there and maybe one bullet point and then go to the next thing and that's okay. Great. Um, I do know that there's some additional questions, but just for the sake of time, um, Hallie has been gracious to share her contact information. And as mentioned, this is being recorded. And so you can find it at our website. Um, but Hallie, I just want to thank you so much for this wonderful conversation and presentation. You've given so many good tips and, and I very much appreciate that you asked people to write down what are your next steps? Because I always think that's an important um, piece to walk away with. So we're so proud that you're an alumna and so grateful for your time today for doing this program. Um, just real quick to close this out, uh, please join us tomorrow on Wednesday, October 28th at noon Central Standard Time for our next alumni exchange program featuring three-time alumnus, Dr. Gary Buslick, who will present, did Shakespeare really write those plays? Let's discuss and laugh. Regardless if you are an expert or barely remember reading Romeo and Juliet in high school, this fun program will have you questioning what you know about Shakespeare as Dr. Buslick talks about talks about this through his humorous presentation. And I promise you, you will laugh. Uh, as always, you can find out more at go.uic.edu backslash alumni exchange. And of course, as I mentioned at the beginning, please be on the lookout for a quick survey. It will take you less than 30 seconds to fill out. Thanks again to Hallie for, for this wonderful presentation. Thanks to all of you for joining us. And we look forward to hopefully seeing you tomorrow, but again in the future at UIC Alumni Exchange Programming. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks so much. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.